and it appears to be going. Okay, mm. testing. Yeah, no, that's just fine. So we're we're sitting in the Sir John Betjeman, I believe. The Betjeman Arms, yes, the Betjeman Arms uh, St Pancras Station. They built it out of matchsticks. <laughs> Originally, of course, it burnt down, uh, and they've done it out of brick now. <laughs> um, yes, uh, he's a poet, Sir John Betjeman. You a fan of Betjeman? Um, I think I really like the night train. That was his, it was a film he made of uh, a night train, postal train. And there was, uh, there was a, a poem with a, with a film over it. I quite like that, but I can't remember a word. So I'm not a massive fan of Betjeman, but uh, uh, nothing against him. Have you heard his music? Did he make music as well? I have a couple was... of albums of his. No, he, really? he, he did trash jazz. Really? Trash jazz with his uh, poetry. Yeah. Well, that's possible because there was there was music on the night train, but I don't think he made the music. I thought that was well. Then you, well, he had a is band. That, is that a recommended? A, a recommend? It's very peculiar. Oh, right, that's a recommend. You know, <laughs> goes well with Vivian Stanchel. Oh, right. Okay. He's in, in that uh, in its way. Onzo dog doodari uh, kind of thing. Who Good. Uh, look it up. Who were your uh, comedic uh, inspirations when you started? People that made me want to start uh, were. Um, Arnold Brown, John Higley, Malcolm Hardy, Jerry Sadowitz. Uh, that's probably it. I, I the people made me want to carry on. <laughs> Phil K. I'm a massive fan of Phil K. He's the only one that actually. This, I, in comedy, there's two kind of roots. It's sort of, I, I regard as jazz or classical, in the sense of you write something and then perform it, and then the other one is make it up as you go along. And Phil K is the most make it up as you go along bloke I've ever seen. I used to be uh, 25 years ago. I was the show after him in Adelaide, and I used to stand there uh, while he was finishing. And he would, he, it was always completely different. Uh, and there'd be people, he it, it just would be roll, running over. So I'm waiting to go on, but there'd be people walking out backwards, still laughing their heads off, <laughs> but they had, they had to go somewhere else. <laughs> um, and I've also seen him die when, when it, you know, go, go badly, but. Uh, he, uh, even when he does, it's uh, he, I am immense admiration. So Phil, Phil K, I suppose. But John, I love to love John Hegley, uh, Arnold Brown, Jerry Sadovitz. When I first saw him, he, he blew me away. It's amazing. It was um, just the sort of thing you want. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, memories. So, so it, it ranges from the political and satirical Jerry Sadovitz right through to the silly yes. that you were inspired. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Jerry Sadowitz, when I first saw Jerry Sadowitz, I was at the comedy store trying to get an open spot, I think, um, a long time ago, and I hadn't seen Jerry Sadowitz before, I didn't even know who he was. But there was an American Comic Con, and I'd laughed a couple of times, hadn't thought much of it, it was all right, you know. Uh, Jerry Sadowitz comes on and goes, uh, hey, effing, he effing American comics like and names the bloke. They come over here, they see things like, have you ever noticed how blind people can't do crosswords? And from then on, he was telling jokes at such speed and such ferocity that there were different waves of sound crisscrossing the audience. Some people were laughing at the joke before, while other people were going <gasps> at the horror. <laughs> so offensive, and it was like, like a, he's like a human gargoyle. I'd recommend him. <laughs> see how Switzerland takes him. Um, so they're the sort of people. That but I mean, like, maybe when you sort of start off, I mean, what? you know, people go gone about. I mean. Rock and roll is supposed to be like really full of risks and stuff, but mm. I mean, in my view, nothing is as as risky and vulnerable as going on stage uh, in front of a crowd of baying, pissed hyenas, uh, <laughs> going for the jugular kind of thing. I mean, yeah. what made you? What made you have the confidence to, to get started? I don't even? know. I think like a lot of comics, I was shy. How I started was. I was at college and uh, I joined every club in order to meet girls, you know, like rowing club. And I auditioned to be in every play that was on, didn't get into anything. Apart from the one thing, which was where you would go perform something you've written, comic, something you've comic written, in front of two people. And if they liked it, you perform the next day in front of an audience. So I did that, wrote the thing, performed it. They said, yeah, come along. And the next day I did it in front of an audience, first gig in front of an audience. Um, and it went, it went well. And uh, it's a bit like, I think, it's, uh, if you're unlucky enough to have it in you to be a gambler, and you're unfortunate enough to walk into a casino and win, you'll be back. And so uh, it's been downhill ever since. So I'm, I'm addicted to laughter, even that, that joy. And I think it's something to do with being shy, possibly, or... No, I loved it, and uh, I still love it. Uh, less so the travel. 
exciting, but it's, it's very exciting. The, the free, the, I, the, what you can say on a stage and get away with. You can think anything you like in your head, but what you can actually manage to get away with, and what makes people, what people laugh, what we share together when people laugh. Like, and uh, the joy of trying a new thing. For example, I'm working on my new show for Edinburgh this year, and normally th that's a process because you about April, March, you throw away the old, every year I do a new show, you sort of throw it away and you start with nothing. And I walk on the stage, I've got some notes, bits of paper, and I look at it, it just turns to sand in your pocket. And the, the, it, it, to me, it feels like, uh, like you're about to do your, the minutes before you go on, it's like you're about to do your German A-level, but you've never studied German. That's how it feels <laughs> to me. Uh, very but then, magically, things come up. Like, I've got a new opening, right, which I did in um, uh, Nairsborough on, on Saturday, which I've just, uh, it doesn't matter the rest of the show, this is worth it. I walk on and say, ladies and gentlemen, this is an historic moment. I don't know if this probably won't be in the show by the time I get to Switzerland, it doesn't matter. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is a historic moment for, and it's true, it's just true. Yesterday I invented something and manufactured it. Something that will change the world for the better. So, um, a, a device that at a stroke will double the length of the badminton season. <laughs> and I, I call it the night cock. And it's a shuttlecock for you use playing badminton, but I've managed to insert an LED light. <laughs> and then, then I just start knocking it up and down and get the lights turned down. So the audience see this blue light going up and down, up and down. And then uh, I say it to the microphone, I say, and so the hour passed. <laughs> well, then, for me, I got the rest of the show. Uh, but anyway. well, good luck with, with the future of your uh, I mentioned, yes. financial household. Oh, we are, we're made now. <laughs> History. Brilliant. So, I mean, now you, you still, do you yourself in your shows, like you do a, a completely invented show and, and a completely scripted show, or you mix it up now? Um, uh, 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 I, I, well, I have done that. Like one year in Edinburgh, I did um, Buckethead uh, Phenomenon and on and on. Which was um, a completely scripted show, and you know, I forced myself to improvise by having a show called uh, Annual General Meeting, where I invited the audience to submit motions and I'd discuss them. Um, and that, I did that for about five years, uh, forcing myself to improvise. Because what the trouble is with a comedian, you tend to end up with like a stack of material. You can always do material to get yourself out of things, and you know, don't push yourself in any way. But this is uh, normally by about this stage mid-July, it's sort of settled down into something. There may be still bits of improvisation, but but this one, every, I've done eight previews now, every one has been completely different. About two or three little bits the same. Right, that's that's new, the, um, the shuttlecock thing. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, wherever it comes from, mysterious source, the inexplicable, I am grateful. <laughs> do, you, do you have a writing method? Do you do a Raymond Chandler every day, five hours you sit down and... Um, sometimes I force myself to do it and uh, also, so, the show I did last year, I had a stack of stuff I'd written. You know, I did that methodically. None of that ended up in the show. <laughs> None of it. But I used to take this stack of paper around. And, sort of, and now, this year, I, what I, had, I, I, I write notes, like a lot of comics, just in, in a notebook. And then, and I started trying to read out from my notebook. And then I realised I couldn't read my own notebook. <laughs> so I've typed it up. I've got, again, a stack of paper. Again, I don't refer to it. I never come, come near it. But there's some... But I have, on previous previews, I've read some of it out and some of it's gold, but um, I just get distracted and go, go down some tangent. So I'm uh, in a sort of expansive creation mode and, so, and then at some point it will solidify into a show. That's what normally happens. By the end of Edinburgh, it's become a thing. And then you, you, but you're never sure how you're creating it. It's just, you, that's what it is. There'll always be a little bit of, you know, improvisation or, um, you know, and a heckler's a gift from, from the gods. If someone's that good? I, you know, you used to what fear them not to. What, what about shit hecklers? I had one in, in Nesbitt, this woman, and she couldn't shut up. And it was obvious to everyone she couldn't shut up. So I, I tolerated her, you know, I just kept referring things to her. She said, oh, yeah, sorry, I can't shut up. <laughs> but there we are. <laughs> um, but very, very rarely are they completely straight. I mean, it, it has happened, Tom. You know, At what stage did, did the strange dresses come in? Strange dresses? Beer cans and like. That was that was for last year's show. I had uh, half a joke for that. I just I just thought of it. I just wanted to. Cost. I haven't decided on my costume this year. I mean, maybe I don't need one. What with the the night cock. <laughs> but um, uh, well, that uh, would look pretty good. The whole the, dress the of those. I've given it to the Museum of Comedy. So they're going to exhibit it. Uh, it's, it's a real hassle to carry around. That's all the other thing. It's got the cans now. 
The cans are getting crushed. No, I, I, I mean, the, the, you could do the same with shuttlecocks. With those, in shuttlecocks? Yeah. And then read in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, the, the cans thing was just uh, it was a pain to carry around with because I had to fit in it. To avoid it being crushed, it had to be in a suitcase and unnecessary for its. Uh, but it had only half a joke out of it. But I made it, so I had to use it. <laughs> it's like that. It's, um, I'm intrigued that of all the people that you said, uh, you know, inspired you at the start, there's nobody really before the, before 1980. Well, I suppose, oh, before 1980, well, before 1980. And the Sadowitz, K, all those people are afterwards, yeah, well, way I'm, afterwards. Well, uh, I suppose you could say Alexi Sale and the young ones, but that was on TV. I'm talking about live, people I saw live yeah, doing yeah. How I ended up doing it was sort of by accident, and then uh, oh, Ian Cognito, I suppose, one of the people. But they're, they're kind of contemporaries, they're contemporary of mine. Like people, people who I saw maybe want to do it are those, those people. I, I suppose, you know, Mork and Wise, two Ronnie's, Steptoe and Son sitcoms. It's right? funny. But for, they made me want to be a stand up. For like, you didn't want to be a stand up? No, but it, it didn't. I liked, I laughed at things, but that right. I never thought of being a stand-up. I was going to be a scientist. That's my. Uh, well, they they all seemed like a different generation, different yeah. culture, different age, yeah. and like the the Alexis Sales, and you know, all of a sudden it was like, okay, a bit older than I, but but you could imagine having a beer with them in the pub. Yes, a pretty Alexis, he's a very nice man. Uh, but again, it was it was the people I saw live. It was the live scene at that time. Also, people like Andrew Bailey. Um, who used to do the most uh, one Andrew Bailey show is, is, is with incredible um, number of props, very strange, uh, at, well, indescribable. That's how I describe it. <laughs> um, there was a lot more weirdness around the Ice Man when I started out. You know, it, 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 no, never. The most him. bizarre act. It was an act. I remember being in a, a pub in Sydney and he was on the Ice Man doing his act, and I was able to go to the bar in a different room, still laughing at what he was doing. There was no need to be in the room. What he do? He used to he used to melt ice. <laughs> and you had this huge block of ice, and each one was numbered. It was 125 when I first saw it. <laughs> and it, it set up this rickety apparatus to start melting it. And you go, you go this, you know, uh, this isn't an act, I'm doing it for real. They <laughs> start using friction and then a, a blowtorch. <laughs> it was actually melting. He said, as he pointed out, it will melt anyway. <laughs> so, man doing the most pointless thing. Oh, no, but the fact that it's numbered. And the fact that you, when you're out in the morning, yeah, it's going to carry on doing that. Absurd, like a piece of art, really. It was all that, those sort of things. Uh, I mean, that, 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 that's, that's very, very British, kind of 20, 20 miles removed from the absurdity of Bonded Off, Do Band, and so yeah. just way beyond. Do you remember Fofo's Bear Jig? No, I don't. I'm hard. He used to be on the tube. Fofo's Bear Jig? No, yeah, I he used remember. to bash his head against walls. I'm hard. Foffle, spare jig. Foffle, spare jig. Nope. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Can't have seen everything. So, um, have you detected, I mean, I don't want to keep you forever, maybe, a couple of... Got to collect your bike. <laughs> <laughs> have you, um, over the last five years, have you sort of detected changes in the themes that British comedy is treating? More anger, less anger? More drugs, less drugs? Uh, oh, definitely there was a phase of less drugs with the, what they called the chocolate milkshake gang. But in my, my day, it was all, you know, after the gig, you have a drink and you know, drugs was quite rife in my day. But um, personally, as I get older, I'd probably take less drugs. Uh, can't, and, uh, you know, people used to sell it to me dead. So, so there's less drugs. And also there was a, there was a sort of, uh, uh, you know, a wave of acts who, who didn't drink or take drugs. But, but sorry, what I kind of saying just in, in brackets what I meant was like in the late 90s yeah. I kind of stopped going to comedy for a while because every single young comedian coming up yeah. was doing spliff and student jokes. Yeah, the, the, the way I'm sure that that sort of thing happens. I'm not, some, I'm not a good judge of the circuit because I come in, I do my gig, I, I go home, I get back on the train so I don't see a lot of people. What do people what are people talking about? I, and also, I don't really want to watch it. I don't want to hear what, just before I go on, I, you know, I, I don't want to hear what you're talking about. I just want to concentrate on what I'm going to talk about. So, uh, like, I couldn't really provide you an overall survey of what sort of things people are talking about. There's been a rise in some really good women, um, like feminists, so, uh, for want of a better word, um, 
Bridget Christie and Sarah Pascoe and Josie Long has been a real wave of really good female comics come through. But they don't, but, and it used to be, it's sort of pretty standard as a female comic, you've got to talk about periods or what you look like, but they don't. They, they talk about all sorts of interesting things. Um, I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but okay for yourself then has, has really? your kind of um, interests in terms of what you I, I'm politics I suppose I, I, you know, whatever's interesting and engineering I've, I've been uh, talking, talking about hence uh, the shuttlecocks hence the shuttlecocks invention of things um, no I, I don't know it's, as I say it's, it's fluid at the moment each one I talk quite a lot about the Grenfell Tower and um, on one of the previews and then the next one, I tried to talk about it again, and it, that just didn't work at all. So uh, at the moment, I talk about whatever's coming to my head that day, and, uh, and it's very exciting. I don't know. It's like walking a tightrope without the tightrope. Um, no, I don't even know what I'm doing, let alone what anyone else is. <laughs> so before going to Switzerland, will you sort of uh, uh, beef up on Switzerland to uh, oh yes, well uh, have a few Helvetic jokes? Yes, I'll, I'll find out uh, everything there is to know about Switzerland. I've already got my, I do have a, a Swiss a thing that happened to me in Switzerland, which we're going to talk about, uh, not in Switzerland, but it also works in Switzerland, which is, first, first time I went there was, uh, walking on the road, I saw a sign, and I hadn't seen, when you're abroad, you see signs you don't recognise, and it was, a, it was a, up, up high, I think it was in Basel, it was a blue sign with a white rim, in the middle, a white stick figure, so sort of going like that, <laughs> and underneath it, about four inches underneath it was a zigzaggy line going all the way across and looking up at this sign thinking in Switzerland what does that mean no dancing <laughs> and then I fell down the steps <laughs> T turns out in Switzerland they have a sign above the steps to tell you there's steps you know, once you know that it's all right <laughs> I didn't fall all the way down the steps I recovered quite quickly because I've coped for a long time walking on this earth well, right. you will you will know this time around what kind of signs to look out for. Then. Yes, I'm, I'm aware of that one. The blue <laughs> look at steps. Oh, yes. Well, thank you very much for that. I shall very much look forward to I, I, having you in Millers. I look forward to coming to Millers. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Cheers. Thank you. Right. Is that, is